Hi, we're AIA, and today we're going to give you a glimpse of the world of quantum computing by looking at a fascinating quantum algorithm that relates to quantum image processing. But first, let's take a look at what quantum computing actually is. Quantum computing marks a new paradigm of computer science but made possible by the principles of quantum physics. While classical computing uses binary bits that have single state capabilities inherently restricting computing power, quantum computing uses qubits or quantum bits. These are unique because they can exist in multiple states at the same time, while bits can only exist in one state exclusively. For example, a qubit can exist in both the zero and the one state simultaneously, and that's called a superposition. This multi-state capability allows certain algorithms to be exponentially enhanced. Quantum computing also uses a concept called measurement, which causes a qubit in superposition to break down into a classical bit, valued at either zero or one. To further understand quantum computing, we should look at the property of quantum entanglement. This is when two qubits become intertwined into one composite qubit, and it's no longer possible to refer to each qubit independently. That's just a brief introduction to the rapidly developing world of quantum computing, but now let's take a look at quantum image processing. A quantum image is a method of storing image information, namely the position and color value of pixels, in a quantum system. With the use of qubits, images can be stored with significantly less units of information than classical bits. Quantum image processing just refers to working with images in this format. In order to create quantum images, we have to format them from classical images. Any QR, or Novel Enhanced Quantum Representation, is one such format that first appeared in a paper written by Chinese researchers in 2013. As opposed to classical representations of image data, which for a grayscale image would need 8 bits for each pixel to represent their respective values, the AnyQR representation of a grayscale image requires 8 qubits total to represent gray value for the entire image, and two groups of position qubits, which each are sized exponentially lower than the dimensions of the image, specifically ceiling of log base 2 of each dimension. The algorithm accomplishes its encoding by using a superposition so that every pair of groups of position qubits can be entangled with its appropriate color value qubits. This entanglement means if you measure a certain position, then you will measure the correct gray value for that position. Let's take a look at some examples. Here we have a 2x2 two two grayscale image, which we encoded in any QR, and we measured it and put the results in the histogram on the right. To read the labels, the format is as X position, then Y position, then color value. For example, at position 0, 01, the gray value is 140, and as you can see, all of these match the image correctly. Here is a 4x4 image, and also a 4x5 image which we encoded. One of the original restrictions in the paper we read was that the image had to be 2 to the n by 2 to the n. However, we avoided this restriction by just pretending that the image was 4x8, and then discarding any measurements that are out of bounds of the image. For example, at free 7, we measure color 0, but since free 7 is not actually part of the image, we can just throw that away. So we picked the AnyQR algorithm because of the great potential uses for it. As mentioned before, a direct use of AnyQR is to compress classical image data. But once an image is stored as a quantum image, you can take advantage of quantum image processing to edit the image significantly faster than through classical means. For example, although there's some limitations to this, if you want to change the colors of an entire image, it only requires manipulating eight qubits, while it would take much more to use classical methods. During our research, we also learned about some other algorithms that can be applied to any QR images, uh, such as edge detection, secure image transfer, and steganography, which is the process of hiding information in images. So this table shows our resource estimations for our four test images, which were all quite small in terms of pixels. But basically what this information tells us is that we currently don't have hardware that supports enough qubits and is robust enough against errors to use any QR practically, even though we can use it for some small contrived images. An interesting thing to point out in this data table is the, uh, the 10 second compile time for a simulation of a real quantum computer 
is much longer than that of a classical computer. So while quantum image processing is much faster than this classical equivalent, um, the process of actually encoding quantum images is still an unsolved problem. Here are some of our key takeaways from this process. We learned that reading quantum computing papers can be incredibly trying, but external resources such as Qiskit Notebook can provide immense guidance on understanding them. We also learned that there is tremendous benefit in unit testing. Unit tests allowed us to visualize and verify our results. But most importantly, we learned the benefit of writing readable code instead of just rushing through it, especially after we spent an entire day debugging just to find that we accidentally used a Y instead of an X in one of our measurement result functions. Thank you guys so much, and we wanted to give a special thanks to the Beaverworks program, our teachers, and our TAs for such an incredible opportunity to learn more about quantum software. Thank you guys so much.